it's not your fault then you don't deserve All the bad and the hurt I know you tried so hard Ooh, I know you've done your part It's not fair You did your time How much longer will you suffer in this life? But don't give up Just hold on tight It'll be alright All your life you've so tried home again in, uh, To be a good man inside As you can see there's a A smattering of snow On the hills um, It's forecast to get down to around minus three tonight and uh, we could have a chance of a chance of snow um, in the early hours of the morning so currently we're on a path which is going to take us up to a ridge further back than what you can see there and it's uh, Gwain Kerrig Cloytheon yeah, Cloytheon. Right. Yeah. So the start of the walk is a pretty steep ascent, and uh, I've got to say, with a full pack, it's quite uh, it's a quite a tough start. So we'll make tracks now and give you a bit more progress as we go along the walk. <sighs> Currently out of breath on this one. Whew. Tough going. <sighs> if anyone's not familiar with uh, this area, um, that's the Taliban Forest. Um, Talabon Reservoir is round that way and if, you, if I pan round somewhere over the top of our hill and further beyond is Penavan, Corn D and Cribbin just to give you some idea of where we are so and in the distance you can just make out the, the Sugarloaf Oh shit. My foot just went down that hole. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Ooh. Right. Um, just come onto the ridge now. And, uh, This little bit of a pond which is frozen over. Yeah, I brought my gaiters, but uh, I forgot to put them on. But um, I really thought I needed my bird, but it's only like a, a dry powder snow, so just so well I didn't. Come on, Reeves, I don't think I need them. Like I said, we're on the ridge. And we're going to follow it so far and uh, find a camp spot.
we're trying to find a a suitable camp spot for two tents, but uh, it's a bit lumpy and bumpy around here. Yeah? Um, never camped on this side before, so it's all uh, new territory, really. But I'm sure we'll find something now. Right, so we haven't walked a million miles. Um, did that for a reason, we just don't want to go too far off the beaten track. Um, trying to find some flat pitch is a bit of a, a task, but we think, we're thinking around here somewhere, maybe over by there. It's not the best. But uh, we try and find the best flat pitch we can. We try to go a bit further down. Um, down there is really out in the wind, but uh, nothing suitable. Right then, let's get these tents put up. Right, that's the tent set up, guys. Um, it won't be easiest because the wind is uh, quite strong up here. You can probably hear it on the camera, on the on the audio. Um, there's Mark's tent, the Van Gogh Nevis 200. Again, I got a Fjall Raven, a uh, Fjall Raven Abisco 2 light, and uh, that's the sunset. Damn cold again. In the techno, folks. Um, setting up my uh, sleeping system. I gotta say, it's not as flat as the pitch is, a bit of a dip by here, but um, I've got a thermal rest Neo Air X Thin. Brilliant mat, but the only thing I do not like about it is 
quite thin and this one has actually got a slow puncture and uh, you've got to be so careful where, where you you pitch this uh, or put this mat because the slightest um, twig or whatever just will puncture this so uh, so yeah when I get back I'm gonna I have to try and repair this but um, it will last a night But it will lose air, so in the morning it'll be like probably half inflated. But um, I, I can manage with that until I get it repaired. So yeah, not too bad. So that's my uh, sleeping pad. So there's my uh, down bag. Let that loft back up again now. Um, I think this bag is good for minus ten. It's really warm and uh, to finish off I've got a Jokel of Sweden inflatable pillow another little tip for um, beginners beginners while camping if you've got check out one bag that's my uh, my sleeping bag sleeping bag uh, stuff sack if you can put all your stuff sacks in one bag so I got one from my mat and one from my uh, my pillow. Put them all in one into one bag. Then just stick it into your rucksack so you're not like trying to find stuff when you wake up in the morning to pack everything away. Everything's in one in one place, so you're not gonna lose it. Just for you, Mark Forian, the Herefordshire Firewater. Hey guys, I've got these new coffee bags. They're made by Cafe Express and you can buy these in the shops. But I bought these on eBay and I bought a box of 50 for 50, 15 pound. So that's like 30 pence a cup of coffee. There's a proper filter bag in there. You stick inside your cup and you pour the, wind, uh, the water in and it's like a proper filter cup of coffee for 30p highly recommend them like I say you can buy them in the shops but um, you can buy them on eBay and Amazon I think so yeah really nice cup of coffee that is ideal for um, wild camping as well
open the bag. Make sure all the coffee's in the, the bottom. You just tear. Tear the top of that off. And there's these tabs either side. So you pull the tabs open. And there's that there that hooks over the cup. So that's it. Pull the water in there straight into the cup. And you got yourself a nice cup of filtered coffee. Bloody lovely it is. So what I'm doing is I'm boiling my water for my coffee in my new 1100 milliliter titanium pot, which also comes with a 330 milliliter frying pan that actually acts as a lid as well. I know it's only a small frying pan, but you could probably cook a big burger in there or a couple of sausages, a couple of rations of bacon, I suppose. Yeah, so I got this from AliExpress, the two of them, for £25. And it's made by Rover Camel Titanium. So for 25 quid, Two pieces of titanium kit. Can't go wrong really. Absolute bargain. And it only took about 10 days to come in the post. So um, all round a pretty good deal I'd say. Hi guys, me and Simon are back in our tents now. It's absolutely bitter outside. It is absolutely brass monkeys. So, um, I'm in my tent having a coffee. I think Simon's doing the same. So, A bit breezy as well, but it's all good fun. So I'm going to finish my coffee now, and then then I'll probably get some food on the go. So I'll catch you in a bit. Right then, guys, it's time for a bit of grub now. I'm using my fire maple stove. I got a bag of boil in the bag rice. That'll take about 15 minutes. And I got a homemade homemade chili. Well there's um there's my tea all served up. And that's going to be washed down with the obligatory Herefordshire fire water. Happy days! Right, let's tuck in. So there we have the, the sausages sizzling in the pan. I boiled some water for the mash. Um, I'm going to need 200 millilitres. I think it's 200 millilitres. Yeah. 200 millilitres of water for gravy. So yeah, I'll uh, give it a start and I'll bring you back. As you can see, my sausages are uh, sticking to the pan. <laughs> I wish I brought some oil now, a little bit of oil, but uh, I thought it'd be enough fat coming out of the sausages to keep the pan a bit moist, but uh, no, that's not working. But Water's boiling. I'll see how this goes now. 
when this mashed potato actually serves three people so I'm going to put half the water in that it says so you know I'm never going to eat all that so uh, yeah I'm going to put half the water in so it's just enough for me really happy days there we are then that's the finished <laughs> the finished meal um, mashed potato Cumberland sausages and beef gravy so uh, not a bad attempt to be honest yeah so we'll tuck it into that now looks, looks uh, really tasty <laughs> just nipped outside the tent uh, there's a nice bit of frost forming on top of here now, the wind's dropped considerably. Uh, I said earlier at the, the start of the, the video that um, you probably get down to about minus three. I think it's going to be colder than that. I think it's going to be at least minus five. And it could even get down to minus six, minus seven. Um, no, at the end of the day, we got adequate clothing. You know, we came up here with all the right gear, so we should be all right. In the tent is warm enough anyway, so so yeah, it should be uh, a warm night in our tent. So yeah. The wind has virtually disappeared. I know you can see the tent moving, but what a difference a couple of, uh, well, an hour makes or whatever. A couple of hours. Over there, the lights. I'm not sure if you can see them on this camera. But I think that's Merthyr Tidville over there in the distance. Max tent that's starting to freeze over as well. It's only 10 to 7. The Van Gogh Nervous 200. I gotta say though, like people rave over these Hillyburg tents and stuff. Each of their own, I suppose. They're very expensive, obviously a good tent, but um I personally think you can't go wrong with a Van Gogh tent. The fabric like is this just a bit thicker you know it's just, it seems to absorb wind a lot better like um, well this tent the foul, the foul raven or foul raven is uh, a good tent but it's very the material is very flimsy obviously to keep down on the weight I suppose and whatever but I don't think you can go far wrong with a Van Gogh tent Honestly, I think they're I think they're bomb proof. And if you've seen uh, our other videos, we use not again. We use a Van Gogh Hurricane 200, and that's an awesome tent. That is really good, really good. Hello, welcome back to the tent. Just been outside for a call of duty, and I gotta be fair, it is absolutely bitter. It's that cold, my cider is freezing up in the can. You know, when you drink it, you can taste all, well, you can feel all the ice in there. God, oh, it's bitter. Oh. All good fun, though. So, um, I'm going to have another can or two. And I'm going to call it a night then. Because I think there's a um, snow forecast at 3 o'clock in the morning. 3 or 4 o'clock. So that'll be interesting. Seeing what we're going to wake up to. So yeah, I'll have a, another couple of cans and I'll bring you back in a short while. Hi right, guys, welcome back to the tent. We are going to go to bed now. Um, 
unbelievably, there's not one breath of wind. So still. You know, we're on top of a mountain and normally it's blowing a gale. But anyway, we're going to turn in now. Anyway, good night, Sign. Good night, Mark. Good night, John Boy. <laughs> good night, Jim Bob. <laughs> good night, Mary Ellen. <laughs> uh, anyway, good night, guys. See you in the morning. Morning. Just woke up now, it's five past five. I haven't been outside yet, I don't know if you can hear it. I think it's snowing. Tell you what, my sleeping bag is soaking. I don't know if you can see it, the condensation. Unreal. Don't know if the camera's picking it up, but <sighs> pretty wet on the inside. This is. Not good. Still warm, like you know. It was pretty warm in this down bag. But condensation on the tent. It's a bit of an issue. Hmm. Right. Gotta go outside now, see what the weather's like. I'll show you in a minute. Right, just open the tent door and my boots are filling up with snow. Oh, nightmare. And it is hammering down with snow. So I'm going to get outside now and have a look. Morning again. Just been outside now and it is like a blizzard out there. I checked the forecast last night and it said light snow, a gentle breeze, but it's anything but light. It is heavy. I checked the forecast again and it says heavy snow for the next four or five hours. And to be honest, we're going to have to bail. It's about quarter to six now. We're going to pack up and try and head down in the dark, which is going to be fun. But um, yeah, this, um, we have to do it. The car is down in the car park. I don't want to get snowed in. So it seems like the most logical and, well, sensible thing to do, I suppose. So we're going to pack these tents up now and We'll bring you back when we're on the trail. Right then guys, that's all, that's all packed up now. That's where my tent was and it's starting to fill in with snow already. Simon's just putting his um, waterproof cover on his pack. And then we're going to walk this way. And it's a bit sketchy to say the least. So. We've got to be very careful here walking back down. God, I nearly went then. So yeah, still snowing. Still pitch black. And I think we're heading in that direction. So, I'll see you on the trail. Right guys, there's no path. So what I'm doing, I've got my OS map on my phone. 
going to follow the arrow to that ridge and then make our way go southwards down that way and then down you've got a green um, can you see that green area there we've got to go to the left of that and down the path so that's the way we're going to go Right, back on the path now. So if we follow this, we can't go far wrong. Oh, it's bleak up here. But beautiful at the same time. Tell you what, we've got this fresh snow and it's covered in sheets of ice. I just went down back there, like, I went down like a sack of King Edwards. And I couldn't do anything to stop my fall, just went straight down, boom, gone. And that's how easy it is to have an accident. It's not good. Making our way down now. I think it's the final descent. And you've got to work like a crab on the side, otherwise, you're a goner. Yeah, so, little tip for you when you're walking downhill in snow walk on the side and just dig your heels in. We're not far away now, are we? God, it's so dark. Could be a fox. It's coming towards our van. Now that's got to be a fox print, haven't it? There we are, guys. Back of the van now. We got some snow to clear. Glad it's in one piece to be honest. It's like I'm shining a light around here in a minute. I might get the stove on and get a coffee before we head back. And that's the good thing about having a camper van. Right then. In the van now we're gonna make a move home. Didn't bother having a coffee. I just want to get out of here, so um, hopefully we can get down. There's like a bit of a hill going down. So I want to take down nice and slow, make sure I get down there and get back onto the main road. So thanks for joining us on this one. And we'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye for now. Jolkin, will you? <laughs>